So, I've gotten this weird feeling that not a lot of artists who want to make mangas, comics or webcomics are sure what the hell to draw them on. And believe me, when I was making my first manga, I myself wasn't. And because of that, I had to resize and edit 204 pages of my first print multiple times. So I've decided to save probably a lot of people the pain and share with you all I know about the formats of mangas, comics and webcomics, with also a good handful of information about printing mainly manga in a country that doesn't read the right to left. Manga. Let's of course start with manga. It's kind of my main thing that I've been making for years now and do have a print as well. I had it printed for my graduation project. I have not been published yet, but I will share some really valuable information for people who want to self-publish later in this video. Before, manga magazine format. If you're interested in entering competitions and making one shots, which is kinda the mainstream route, you will need this format a lot. I am personally using B4 for all of my projects. Yes, even the personal ones. The reason being that I just enjoy drawing on it. I'm going to show you my settings in Clip Studio Paint. I recommend Clip Studio Paint to everybody who wants to draw manga. It's literally made for it and, and industry standard from what I've heard. But now, let me explain each setting on this format from top to bottom, because there's a lot. Width is 257 millimeters. That is a width of the entire canvas. Height under it is 364 millimeters. Again, height of the entire canvas. This is a B4 paper format. It's like A4, but a bit bigger. And no, I am not going to translate anything here to inches. This video will take forever already. <laughs> so now we have resolution under it, which is DPI. What it means doesn't really matter to you. All you have to know is that it literally determines the quality of your print and minimum for printing is 300. But for a manga, the minimum is 600 because of screen tones. Basic expression of color is just color, grayscale and monochrome. You can change it individually on layers later or change it on the entire canvas later too. But for a manga specifically, I highly recommend using the grayscale, because you can set up the frequency of your screen tones under it. Default frequency, as I said literally a few seconds ago, is the frequency of screen tones, which you can set up between 50 and 60, which is a standard for manga as I have googled just now. I kinda use 70 for the longest time. I might start to use 60 though. See, even I am learning here. Then we have everything set up here. Let's go down here to comic settings. If you don't see what I see, you have to check this little thingy. Binding finish size is basically the final thing after it has been cropped, because this area behind this line is gonna be gone. But more on that later when I tell you how to draw in each area. Yes, there are things you should and should not be drawing in these different areas. That's why they are there pretty much. The binding size is 220 millimeters wide and 310 millimeters high. Yes, the cropping area is gonna be a bit wider on the top and bottom. Don't freak out. And then default border, inner size is gonna be 20 millimeters from all sides, aka 2 centimeters from each one. 
this inner border is basically where all the important stuff should be and this middle one is only when you want some panels to go off the page and bleed with I don't really use I believe it's another thingy that's supposed to help you with cropping stuff but it only confused me when I used it so I don't now I'm gonna give you an example with a really fresh page from Lifesteal. As you can see, all the important stuff like bubbles, faces, sound effects, everything is in the inner border. The middle border is just stuff that can be potentially cut off if necessary and the outer border is pretty much empty, ready to be cut off. I still draw a little bit more into the outer border simply because if somebody messes up the cut, Having the extra line or screen tone can prevent it from looking, well, messed up. Trust me, we did magazines at school. Not manga ones, but it was painful. So that would be pretty much it for manga magazine format, which you will need, especially, as I said, for competitions like Silent Manga Audition. B6 manga book format. And now we're coming to something that I literally had to figure out by myself. Kinda. You see, for B4 I had this beautiful guide provided on the Silent Manga Auditions website. But for this one, I had nothing to go off of. Only Google. But I've decided to go about it in a similar way to the B4 one. Of course, there are gonna be those three borders, or what I've decided to call them for now. This is the abomination I came up with when I needed to send my manga out for print. And the funny thing is, it worked, I guess. I have my printed copy on my bookshelf right now. Well, the way I did it was that I added 20 millimeters around the binding finish size, so the printing company has some kind of wiggle room when it comes to cutting and did it in a similar way to the B4 one. Important stuff in the middle can be cut off in between and will be cut off outside. But I have sent the printing company two different PDFs, one with the outer border and one without it. I'm not sure which one they used, so I don't really know if it's necessary, but better safe than sorry, trust me. Printing right to left manga in left to right reading country. Now I'm gonna stop frying your brains for a moment and give you a little piece of info that I learned when printing Japanese reading direction manga in a non-Japanese reading direction country. I literally had to flip my manga backwards. Now. I'm not kidding. In order for them to print it for me, I had to completely rearrange my manga backwards. Same with the cover. That means that the last page was the first and the first page was the last. So for anybody planning to print in a non-Japanese country, get ready for that or better yet, start preparing a folder where you have your entire volume backwards. Nobody told me that when I started making manga and I was quite surprised when I found out. But now you don't have to be. Also remember that most of the time your manga will start with a single page and make sure to pay attention where every page should be. Usually the odd pages will be on the left and the even ones on the right. Also remember that there are at least four pages before your manga pages even start. Usually with content, publisher info, cover art, etc. Your pages won't start until like page 5. And remember to always export as single pages, even double pages, so the printing company can sort it out themselves the way they need to. The most horrid thing would be if you made it as double pages and did it completely wrong. It's really easy to mess up because it's very hard. I'm not gonna explain why because we would be here until the end of times, just Export everything as a single page and save everybody the trouble. Resizing and moiré. As I said, I use mainly B4 format to draw on. 
And then I resized the page to B6 in case I wanted to print it as a regular sized manga. The one issue with that is screen tones. Screen tones are a very sensitive thing and can make really bad patterns on your pages if you don't resize them correctly. That effect is called moire. If you want to ever resize anything with screen tones, you have to pick all of the layers and resize them all at once. Clip Studio Paint will keep the screen tones intact for you. Never resize an already exported PNG or JPEG because that's gonna look horrible, both online and when printed. Another thing with screen tones that I can tell you is don't use them online. Export just the grayscale version of your manga for online posting because it may and will cause the unwanted Moira effect on different websites. That's just how billion dots work when it comes to just a limited amount of pixels on your screen. As I said, screen tones are something you really need to be careful with. Comic! I'm gonna be honest here and say this is the one I have the least experience with. So I recommend you go find somebody who has more to say about this one. But if you're willing to stay here and listen to a manga artist talk about comic formats, you're absolutely free to. What I have found out in my Google session is that comic book format standard is 184 millimeters wide and 264 millimeters high. I've also seen 175 times 267 and bunch of other formats that can be used. Comic books seem to be very loose when it comes to formats unlike manga. I'd still make sure to use similar borders though. I've tried to make some settings for Clip Studio Paint following the image I have found on a measuringknowhow.com. I hope it can help you a little. From what I understood, this is the inner border that has all the important stuff in it. This is the middle one that can be cut off and this is the one that will be cut off. And this is the bleed, I assume. The great thing about comic book is that you kinda don't have to follow the standard and can use like A4 or A5 or any other format without a worry because it's so loose. For manga, it's kinda strict in that regard. Also, I do not own any comic books, so I cannot check. But if you do own any that you'd like to have the same size as, just take a ruler and measure them. But don't forget to add the borders correctly. You should add the inner border, which determines where your panels will be, and the middle one, where panels can go off the page or it's a wide space around them, and the outer border, which will be bigger than the binding finish size, aka middle border, which means bigger than the size you want because it's gonna be cropped. I hope this all made sense. I have included the comic one mainly for my friend who wants to make comics and doesn't really know what to do when it comes to setting up a canvas for print and since I have some experience, I might as well share it with the world. Exporting multiple pages without a cropped part. There is a way to set up multiple pages of your manga or comic in Clip Studio Paint and even export them without the part that gets cropped in print. You pretty much check this little thingy, write the number of pages you'd like and create a file. Then when you're finished with your chapter, just click file, export, multiple pages and change this little setting here to this. And voila! You have exported the entire chapter without the part that would be cropped in print. You can also keep this setting on in case you want the cropped part there, which you will probably want if you are sending it to some kind of publisher or a printing company, of course. Webcomic. This is probably the easiest format to grasp and set up, 
because you are pretty much not looking at many technicalities like you do when printing. But I'd highly recommend making a normal page format, either comic or manga of your work and then adapt it to webcomic one, in case your work would become popular and you'd need it because people wanted prints. It was not really my experience, but I've heard horror stories of people who made 72 DPI webcomics and then cried boulders trying to adapt it for print. And 72 DPI is brutally low. Remember, minimum for printing is 300 DPI and for manga it's 600 DPI. If you're getting lost in DPI's, just keep everything 600 and you're pretty much golden. Back to the webcomic formats. Usually you have it pretty much served on most platforms, but not every format is viable on all of them, because for some reason everybody wants something different. And as somebody who uploads on pretty much everything under the sun because of testing, Yes, I am still testing websites in the background even after that video. It would be pretty tiring to resize your work over and over and over again. I'm actually using this one format that works on pretty much everything I upload on. I have stolen it from Tapas years ago and figured out that somehow it works on webtoon and webcomics and what else too. Like literally the formats and sizes written on webtoon are just a suggestion and all I needed to do is make it the correct number of kilobytes. So this is kinda the universal format you can just grab and use everywhere. Mind you, the DPI for webcomics can be as low as 72, but I just don't really care. I'm used to seeing 600 so I just have it there. Mind you. You most likely need multiple strips like this for an episode and feel free to crop it as you see fit. My strip sizes are also all over the place because of that. And for the ending of this video I'm just gonna say, all of this I have learned from experience or from googling. I'm an independent manga kaya of yet and if I have said something incorrectly, then absolutely feel free to correct me in the comments. I'll appreciate it. Okay, I hope that's all for this one. It was very long, very technical, and very long. Have a great rest of the day, and see ya.